hear me or no? Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear okay. you loud and clear. Very good. Very well, I good. I got excellent. you now too. It sounds good. All right, we're all we're up. <laughs> excellent. The technical excellent. stuff is done. That's good to hear. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Paul. Uh, so today on Sabutio Trailblazers, we have a very special guest, none other than Paul Eyes. Welcome, Paul. How are you? I am fine, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. No, no, it's a pleasure. I was really excited to actually reach out to you and. Uh, you know, you were you were welcoming the idea of coming on. Really good. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your background, Paul, because you you are actually a pioneer of Sabutio in the United States, aren't you? Um, with Sabutio, I, I I guess you could say that. Um, um, maybe especially with like organized play and things like that. Um, so my background is you can probably pick up from my accent. I'm a bit of a mishmash. I'm. Uh, I was born and raised in the north of England and in, uh, in the Manchester area. Mm. And I moved over here in my 20s and I, I did play Sabutio as a kid. Um, so that was my connection there. And then um, I really, I played it a lot. So I was wow. really into it and the whole game. So, um, and then I ended up coming to the States in my 20s and did not play for a long, long time until I became a teacher and that's when i got back into it because i just thought it would be something fun to do with the kids at school mm. and um when i started that at school it kind of became a little crazy uh, in terms of the enthusiasm and um it kind of took off from there where i i kind of got my way into meeting some people here who were already kind of involved in sabudio kind of playing um, tournament type Sabudio. So um, that's how I got started and then it, it kind of all went from there. Excellent, excellent. So when exactly, uh, if you don't mind my asking, did you uh, arrive in the United States and decide to settle there? So I, I came in the late 80s and I was still, you know, footloose and fancy, fancy, uh, footloose and fancy free, is that what they say, <laughs> at, that, say at that stage. And um, it wasn't until I kind of settled down, I guess, in the um, mid to late 90s, especially the late 90s, I became a teacher mm. in Maryland in the USA. And that's when um, I started to introduce it. I think it was actually right around 2002, 2003 in school. Wow. Um, I'd had a little bit of involvement with a very important person here for Sabudio history is Greg Denhart. Mm. who has played internationally is well known and in the 90s he was very active and a very very good player he's a seven-time national champion wow. and I'd, I'd gone down to see him in the 90s to play but then my kids were all very young and uh, it was a hard trip like a two-hour trip to get down to see him and play so it was kind of like a false start but I did mm. get to know some people and that came into play later on because as I resurfaced, as it were, with mm. the kids and teaching mm. them in middle school, um, we, Greg and I reconnected. And then from there, um, I was teaching kids to play just as a, obviously as a fun after school activity. And it became very engrossing. The kids were kind of running down the hallway to come and sign up. And uh, it's a very visual wow. game, as you know. And yeah. It, it just really kind of took off from there. So, um, yeah, being in the States since the 80s, uh, uh, the 90s started to get back into Sabudio, and then 2002, 2003 started to get organized and involving kids playing. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So if we go back in time a little bit uh, yeah. to your early days in uh, Manchester, the United <laughs> Kingdom, uh, the yep. homeland of the original game before Sabudio, there was new footy wasn't there the, yeah yeah the original one. Uh, yeah that's before my time yeah uh <laughs> the new footy i'm not quite that <laughs> because that was in the 30s um but um yeah for me i started i got introduced as a kid um coming home from school i would have been around 10 9 10 8 9 10 around there and I rem uh, so this would be the early 70s mm. and I right at the beginning of the 70s and I remember going to a friend's um, house after school and he had the international edition of Sabudio and I'd never mm. seen it before and um, we just got on the carpet and started playing and um, 
I just loved it right straight off and uh, you know it played for like an hour the whole setup and having all the accessories out and the colors and and, uh, and I was just absolutely blown away by it and I, I ran home it wasn't that far to get home from my friends and I got home and I know that night I said to my parents like I played this game and I loved it mm. and I loved it and I know they went and got it me for Christmas and I think my dad, you know, it was the day of notice boards at work where mm. I think he was wanting to see if people had it and could he pick up some a, a set real easily. And he got some equipment. I didn't get like a new set, but it was all great stuff. Um, mm. He got some stuff that was, I think, from work, like maybe a kid had played with once. I don't know, but it, it looked pretty much brand new. And I got it for Christmas that year. And... Um, I kind of was hoping they'd got it, mm. so I knew where they put the Christmas presents. I hope right. they yeah. this <laughs> thing. So yeah. I actually snuck up for about two months and would take the game down. And one night, I had an older brother and, and stuff, wow. so I looked at, and I would play with it a little bit, then put it back to get back, put it back up there, <laughs> and. That was that, and uh, so from Christmas Day, I was already set up. So, <clears throat> yeah, I just love the color and the feel of it, the tactile and the, mm. and it still holds today. I think when you see mm. the game out, mm. when you see the green bays and the and the field and the figures, um, I don't care what age you are, and I've seen it. People just get drawn to it, and that's the mm. biggest thing mm. in the game. Um, and it is just like they want to know something about it, and they're just like. It, it, it's like a, a magnet, you know, so it's still, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I uh, totally know what, what, what you mean. And it's kind yep. of funny because uh, uh, like you or a little bit later, because I was based in New Zealand and we didn't really have the game so much, but I saw the ads, yep. the original uh, ads that were aired in the UK were also aired in New Zealand many many years later so we got those ads yeah. on tv and i was i was soccer crazy i was actually playing soccer uh, yeah. i represented my my region in various age levels so i was really into it and i saw that game and i thought wow what is that but yeah, we didn't yeah. really have anything like that in the shops now fast forwarding uh in 1985 i went to visit some uh relatives in italy and of course they were mm -hmm. soccer crazy there so yep. my cousin said oh uh let's play sabutio and, like, well, what, what, <laughs> and he yeah. showed me i was like wow i was blown away yeah. by the pitch yeah. and the players and uh yeah. but you needed a certain amount of skill because they were, they were curling yeah. these things around and you could only shoot from inside a very small quadrant there yeah but it it was very addictive, very addictive. Yes. Now, fast forwarding further on, that was the end of that. I only played it six times, came back to New Zealand. Nobody was really into it. Back yep. into rugby, back into actual physical soccer sports. Yep. Coming to Japan many, many yep. years later, uh, there was nothing really here. And it was funny because I was browsing. This is like only about three years ago. Uh, the internet, mm -hmm. and I came across a really good channel called Subutio Man. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> you yeah. Heard of, yeah, and there was this interesting guy, but he had an American yeah. accent. So, I was, oh, what's this about? Maybe <laughs> American football? Because I'm also into American football. It was right. soccer. So, I thought, well, yeah. that's Subutio. However, yeah. the bases were flat. So, that intrigued me. And I was really blown yeah. away by your presentation because you've got an excellent uh, teaching manner and style. Right. and the way you broke down the rules and introduced it yeah. um and that got me hooked into it so it's actually because of you it's your fault that i'm playing it now so okay, thank you yeah yeah you can blame me there andrew that's right um yeah i get a, a lot of feedback on that and it's actually cool for me to hear people say that story i've heard it a few times andrew i'm not being you know getting mm. too full of myself there but i have and i did it um you know i am i, I am a, was a teacher i'd retired a couple of years ago so it came naturally to me to kind of um you know put my thoughts out there and show people how things are done and uh i i was doing that all day every day you know for hours and hours on end so um i did have that kind of honed uh, that ability to do that and then putting it together with the love of sabudio so 
Um, yeah, I mean, and I was for most part there, I was holding a camera, like a small mm -hmm. camera with a memory. I forget what it's even called. It was before cell phones, really. And um, I do believe I was one of the first to really mm -hmm. put stuff out there mm -hmm. um, about Subudio uh, on video and break down the rules. And I do know there's a bunch of people who came back to the game. Um, so looking back on it now, it looks pretty rough and ready. You know, the quality's not that great, um, but it did do the job. Um, I've since gone back and on the Subudio Mount channel on on YouTube, you know, I've done like a 20 minute um, video guide yeah, to the rules, yeah. which is as succinct as I can get it, because yeah. uh, they're quite complex, unfortunately. But also, I'm trying to put in there the order in which I taught the game to kids. I, I taught up four to 500 kids to play the game. Mm. And I would never do it in like, let's sit down and I'm going to, let's watch this 20 minute video. It would start with the three minute section on how to flick the figure and then stop. And then mm. you go to your table and we'd have the tables out and show me how to do that. Let's look around and do it. And, me, and of course, as I taught more players, I'd have somebody else watching them in person right there, and I'd get around the tables. And then the idea was always to do things in like three, five minute sections, mm, have mm. them play a little bit, and build on that. They, they called that scaffolding in teaching terms, uh, like you yeah, build yeah. on the understanding yeah, yeah. of something that's complex, and then all of a sudden you understand it and you get to play and experience it rather than somebody sitting down for an hour and listening to somebody drone on about this how you play and then go and do it and walking out the room. That's the better way to do it. So um, I try to uh, update that in my more recent efforts um, and share that because a lot of people ask me, how did you teach so many people? Mm -hmm. uh, there was no secret, that's how I did it. And then try to get people playing as much as possible because if you talk a lot, you know, people, mm -hmm. especially, Nowadays, attention spans are not what they used to be. <laughs> no, uh, that's right. Yeah, with our devices and everything else. So, um, yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I'm great. I'm great to hear that, Andrew. I'm glad you came round to it and found that. And yeah. I'll, I'll chalk it up as another converted. No, definitely. I have to thank you so much for that, and it's really good because uh, uh, I didn't know your profession was a teacher, but when I started watching your videos, I like, wow, I get it. I get it. Where yeah. as before, I was going through the the, the rules, and it's like. Okay, yeah. now the semantics are a little bit different because down under we yeah. speak, of course it's British English, but a little bit differently, United States a little bit differently. Here in yep. Japan it's a second language, it's kind of the yep. interpretations can be odd. And just sitting down and watching your videos, like, in just a few minutes, I, oh, I understand that rule now. Now when I go back and read the rules, it, it makes sense. But it's only because yeah. of your video. So I'm not yeah, trying to blow smoke up your, yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, I, I really, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate your videos, and I've actually shared them. Really good. So yeah. I hope you continue. I oh, really yeah. would like to oh, see yeah. you go through the rule book because it is something Perfect. that has been missing. And yeah, definitely, you're the first in that a really good video series. And. Yeah. I'm going to be jumping around a little bit here, Paul, so I hope you don't mind. I'll be going back Not and at forth all. a little Not bit. Not at all. You Excellent. go for it, Because yeah. I am really excited to have you on. So I, once again, yeah. I thank you for coming on. Excellent. Now, okay. you have, uh, not yep. only are you a pioneer in terms of a player, being a player in the United States, introducing the sport, but recently I saw um, on your site tablesoccerusa.shop. You have yes. uh, come out with a very good uh, line of Sabutio bases and recently even a pitch. Yep. And it's quite impressive because I haven't seen anything like that outside of Europe, outside of Italy, basically, and of course, the, the UK. Tell right. us a little bit more about your endeavors yeah. there. So, um, yeah, I've actually run Table Soccer USA. It was, and then that domain wasn't available, so it became tablesoccerusa.shop. Um, a couple of times, I had one run with that from like 2005 to like 2015, and then took a break and then came back to it. I think it was January 2020 um, in the pandemic. Um, seemed like a good time to kind of start something else. So coming towards retirement from my teaching career. So um, I had time there at home, like a lot of us. 
um, to be getting involved in different things, I thought I'll give this another go. Um, I've always felt passionately about trying to have um, materials on hand and readily available is a key to being able to, in your own area, to being able to spread the game and to grow the game in any way at all. You have to have the materials around. Mm. Um, otherwise, it's a very big barrier, um, um, just getting getting stuff. So that was my main motivation for starting back up in 2020. And then um, I kind of got just running with it and a lot faster than I thought. Um, but um, I guess I had a lot kind of stored up that I wanted to mm. do. I'd always wanted to, to design bases. So I started with a line of bases two years ago and mm. I taught myself some drawing things, which is I'd actually done as mm. a teacher, some 3D technical drawing, but kind of basic really. But I did know the ins and outs of that and what to ask for and what help and when, when mm. I needed help. And kind of navigated producing my first base and they were called Talon bases. Mm. Mm. And um, I was, it, it was fascinating because it's I learned a lot because through the design phase, I learned a lot how to design Mm. and redesign which is part of the design process and then uh, how to get things to market and um, work through like um, you know injection molding procedures mm. and working with companies and all that stuff so I really navigated a lot and it, it went a lot quicker than I thought it would mm -hmm. and I got my talent bases out there um, and I was very excited about it and they're the way that I see them is, you know, an introductory base mm -hmm. to get playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I um, was, you know, proud of them for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, though, you know, I was um, learned a lot through that process. Like the first time I sent my bases out, they went finished mm -hmm. as well as they could have been. Mm -hmm. And I learned an awful lot. I learned some things the hard way, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, people say, oh, these aren't good. What do you do there? Et cetera. And I had, <laughs> change a lot of things so um but you know I, I definitely believe in taking risks you know and you've got to do that and hey we're talking about bits of plastic here and as long yeah. as people are, are happy in the end i'm good to go so i started there and then i, I feel like i perfected those bases and the finish on those bases and then was ready for something else i thought i could improve on that i had a good basic base out there something you could play with and you could chip the ball, get very stable, etc. cetera. Um, then I got into 3D printing. Mm. And I started with that about a year and a half ago, exploring it, and then more seriously about a year ago. And then uh, from there, I, I tried to partner my businesses with working with kids, mm. or with kids that I taught who are now adults. Right. So um, the new bases the 3d rev bases i worked with my good friend greg denhart but the person who created the file was a 13 year old mm. by the name of Braden, who ah. is who is greg's son uh -huh. we worked together and had many planning meetings on it and we were kind of like the brain trust for putting these bases mm. together and many 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 revisions and changes and i also learned a lot through the talent bases mm. um, you know what needed to be there for the market because that was my first go around and um we eventually have got to a point of after a lot of changes things are pretty stable now and i have a base that i'm very comfortable promoting and i know is i would state a competitive base Mm, where okay. it's very stable, has good touch, and it has a good range of shooting. Good, good. Um, so, and I've already, I play with them all the time now, and I, having learned a lot about my first go around, I've kind mm. of softly, softly been putting these bases out there. Nice. But what has happened is that I am getting people now reaching out to me and saying hey i played my buddy at table soccer the other night and he's got your new bases can you make mm. those for me and that is uh no exaggeration that's happening mm. on a daily basis right now that's great uh, I, and uh you know so that's it's a big change and i learned a lot through the process but it's also been fascinating to be kind of in the marketplace 
yeah. and learn on what people are looking for. And I do think I have a unique product mm -hmm. uh, at the moment that's very customizable in terms of like color. Yeah. And it kind of blows people away, uh, to be honest, and what, what is possible. And it's catching a lot of people off guard who think that it's not possible to produce something good 3D mm -hmm. printed. Mm. And the people who are thinking that are already several months behind. Wow. They're already behind the curve <laughs> on that. Wow. But they're already thinking it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You're already. And by the yeah. time this comes out, Andrew, you've edited. They may be yeah. many, many months behind. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of exciting. And I anticipate there'll be many others coming right behind me or right now as we speak. Mm somebody producing something that uh, there's going to be a guy out there who will beat Carlos Flores in an uh, event uh, playing okay. with 3D print. It's coming. Uh, it's they, coming now. Uh, so, yeah. Uh -huh, so, so that's my thing now I'm into. Um, yeah. so I'm very excited about it. and uh, But I'm also enjoying the, just the creative thing and yeah. really talking to players on a daily basis and working with them. And they're discovering me. I'm rediscovering people that I've, I've met years ago, and I'm having fun. I'm having fun with that. So, yep. That's yeah, you're about. you're a real pioneer in every regard. <laughs> it's really good because you know you, the United States. I was talking to uh, Vincent Copanola, and he had many yep. good things to say about you and the U.S. Oh, but he was saying Vincent one of the America. challenges that you you face over there is because the United States is geographically just a huge yeah, nation. Okay. That yep. the traveling time, the distance yep. is one of the challenges to uh, actually promote the hobby, to get people yes. together and whatever. It, yeah, it really is. Um, you know, we've worked with that a lot, but um, we also have a growing soccer community here mm. in the U.S., very rapidly growing, and we're hosting the World Cup again in 2026 yeah. with our yeah. good friends in Canada and Mexico, of course. Yep. Not to forget. <laughs> So um, there's opportunities there, and more and more people are still discovering the game. Mm. I still feel we're on the very edge mm. of a very exciting time for Sabudio, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and things that are coming in the future or opportunities that we're waiting for the right people or the right timing. Yeah. And I'm talking about social media and how things can be spread for um, broadcasting, how things can be spread online with the game, uh, outlets such as Twitch, mm, TikTok, mm, mm. not your usual YouTube maybe, but live streaming options or gaming options yeah. that I think that some people are dipping their toe in there and, and are certainly getting along the way. I was looking at the coverage from Australia this weekend Mm -hmm. and yeah. I can see what they're getting at. Um, yeah, that was that was very well organized. Down yeah, there. and it's coming, and um, it only knowing a little bit about social media, you know, I'll leave that to the young ones for the most part. But it sometimes only takes one thing, and it surprise you what it is mm. that it's like breaking a dam. You know, that all of a sudden a lot of more people get exposed. So. I still feel that level of excitement that it's out there. Um, just to give one example, and Andrew, feel free to stop me if ever you wish. No, no, no. This is really good. Example. Keep going, please. We had um, one of my, I'll call him a protege. Patrick, I'm calling you a protege. He's one of my former <laughs> stu students, but also uh, I spent a lot of time playing some video with him when he was a young player, is Patrick Sheridan. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he's a real entrepreneur type, by the way. He's got that gene in uh, there. Amazing. Yeah. And he um, shared like a short video on TikTok of him playing Sabudio in Greece. Mm. And he's a cool guy. You know, he's rock climber, entrepreneur. Mm. He's able to use social media. And he's just, you know, he knows a lot of people. And this thing just blew up Wow! in terms of hundreds of thousands of views in days. Wow. And that's one, it was a little opening. It was a little kind of like somebody mm -hmm. opened a door and this yeah. bright light came through. All right. And we just need more of those episodes and we need to be better positioned to take advantage of them because I do think there's, there's something big that could break there. Mm. For
but you also have to be ready have some infrastructure with clubs and mm, and other mm. people and you have to have equipment mm. available for mm. people to play to take advantage of it so that's my little story about that but i i'm pretty excited about it yeah no it's really good i mean uh, the 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 future is bright for you definitely and uh, yeah. it's quite amazing entrepreneur you're definitely an entrepreneur there and you're in the right country for entrepreneurs yeah. and the united states is always at the forefront of everything and yeah. uh in terms of uh business ideas whatever you're in the right setting that's great getting Thank back you. to your bases yeah they're excellent yeah. i saw those yeah um i always try to be a little bit of a devil's advocate though when i'm online <laughs> I'll, I'll ask a bit yeah. of a negative just to see the reaction no of the people because no i just want to do it some some yeah. some people don't like it but to be honest yeah. no i was actually really yeah. impressed by your basis but i had to be a little bit of a devil's advocate there and yeah. uh the answer you gave me was excellent i won't repeat it there because it's on facebook however yeah. the color schemes uh, yep. uh, is what actually first attracted me because yeah. i know what those are well, wow those yeah. colors they're new yes. and they're wow. really yep. attractive and appealing and yep. you have some in gold and different colors yep. and you, the the color range is, is actually very unique so yep. that's what first kind of got my attention and no doubt i think that's what's going to hook people first visually yeah. the visual presentation yep. is amazing Right. getting back to your bases you mentioned the talons were the first bases you created now yeah. you are using the 3d revs right yes is that correct yep. yeah yes sir. yeah yeah so for someone absolutely new getting in of course you still got the talent range whatever which bases would you recommend in your product line yeah for me i would still say the talent bases because mm -hmm. um the stability of the base for a, a person starting out mm. and you know you mentioned when you first started playing how challenging it was but mm. that brings mm. other issues too with the figures wobbling mm. and falling etc yeah. um, the talents are very forgiving in terms of that mm. so uh, I always feel that's a good starting point and I still do mm. um, well, sometimes though the market gets ahead, I may say that, but the market gets mm. ahead of you because everybody wants the latest and greatest. Yeah. So then people say, oh, but I hear you have these other ones and whatever. Mm. And <laughs> it's very similar in a way to golf, how people mm. start out and, you know, I play a little golf, but, um, you know, there are clubs like here, you have Wilson clubs that are like, you, know, you can mm. get from Walmart and you can start playing. Mm. But a lot of beginner players just skip that all together and they'll go out and get there are even people who start playing who get measured for clubs straight away and spend mm. you know seven thousand mm. dollars. So um, but sticking with what we're talking about with bases, I would say the talents because of the stability, but it's not then then people as you start to explore and they're priced at that point, they're around thirty dollars mm. a set. Mm. Um, here in the US. Mm. That's the other um, appealing point, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the very affordable. The yes, yep. affordability is yep. very important to get people playing. And then then you start to see, I do see that as a way to kind of pull people in. Mm. And then they mm. get to learn the game more and they're like, oh, I see you making these amazing chip shots from 24 inches. I can't do that with my talons. Well, I'd say, well, no, most likely you can't. Mm. And fair mm. enough, you can't. Um, but you know, this this is what I'm now producing, and this is what I'm trying to now produce something that's on a better level than I feel I have. So it's yeah, I I feel a, an evolution certainly that ha happens, and we see that in I will say because I do separate myself from top line bases, for example. You know, people like Extreme Works uh, right. yeah, that yeah. use the term. I, I, Claudio is a, a great craftsperson. Claudio mm. Dugali, and he uses the term Evo. Pro Evo. I don't, that's, not, that's not a misnomer. It is just that I'm mm. aware, I've not talked to him about it too much, but I know the mm. process that he went through. It was adjusting a bevel mm. point half a degree here. It was changing by 0.2 of a millimeter on the base there. It's changing the height by 0 0.03 millimeter, whatever. Mm. to get what he needed and it is an evolution that mm -hmm. goes on so it's fascinating i actually find it really interesting and i'm mm. 
lucky to have a playing base here that has helped me. Mm. In the U.S., I've always been willing to send out products or um, have people sample them. And believe me, I've got all range of feedback. Yeah. I've had people say me, this is unplayable <laughs> back in the beginning. I can't play with uh, it. I even look at them unplayable. Or, mm. or when I started with the 3D revs, one person said, yeah, these are great for a 3D mm. printed base. Mm. You know, so, uh, you know, and that's not knocking anything. It's just the way <laughs> I actually appreciated yeah. that because some mm. people, uh, a lot of people are almost too polite. You know, they don't want to mm. upset you. And also, mm -hmm. I am fairly well known in the space. Yeah. They yeah. don't want to, <laughs> oh, I don't want to say anything bad about what Paul's done. Yeah. And actually, way past that point, you know, as long mm -hmm. as you're constructive, yeah, yeah, of course. Take it, you know. I really can, and uh, there's lots of different ways to to make these products. So, um, yeah, hopefully I answered that about the talents. I still think they're a good way to go for starting yeah. out. The price is a big part of it, and can you start to see? I think it opens up the possibilities, and then you're ready to start moving on. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and that's what's been needed because uh, a lot of people that want to start up this so many distractions now that yeah. um unfortunately getting things from overseas because of the shipping is killing everything right yes. now yeah uh, it's yeah. killing the hobby so it's quite amazing that you did that you you filled the void with mm -hmm. your product line and it's a good way to get the game back into schools back yeah. into the hands of people that maybe uh you know middle income or lower that saying wow yeah. i, I want to get into it but look, we got priorities yeah. and that's just mm -hmm. unaffordable. And so you make the basis, but recently I saw, now forgive me yep. if I'm a little bit late, but you, you yep. also make pictures. Yes, I just started. Um, I, I And I need to give um, some kudos here to my, fr my good friend Gary in South Africa, Gary Downs, um, who I work with Gary on, and he's with SA Bases, by the way. I think it's SA hyphen Bases to give him a shout out. Okay. Cool. Um, I was working with Gary in terms of giving him ideas and what I wanted, and he's been making customized cloth pictures, mm. uh, which are polyester mm -hmm. material that are printed through a process called dye sublimation, which is what they do, like cheap soccer jerseys that you see, yeah. and they're printed yeah. out. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, no secret to that. I don't think I'm blowing Gary out of the water with that. I, I think he would commonly share that. And great, you know, and actually Gary was very affordable with his prices and please look him up. He does amazing customized work also. So that got me started on that um, and thinking about it. Uh, and on the mm. same um, thought process, I'm always looking to try to have things local. Mm. Uh, and because I think long term, that's going to help me promote the game. Yeah. Um, it had been in the back of my mind, what could I do? So the way that I went around that, I, I told you I like to work with kids. Yeah. I reached out to a former student who's now a graphic uh, designer, graphic, uh, graphic arts designer. Great. And she had been an 11-year-old student of mine like 15 years ago. Sorry, Haley, if I'm giving you your age away. <laughs> and I used to have a um, decorate my overhead transparencies with like a pumpkin. She was an amazing artist ah. when she was 11. Wow. And I happen to know her now. I, I actually know her dad. And I knew mm -hmm. she was a graphic artist. So I reached out to her and uh, myself and Haley um, designed the pitch. Excellent. And she's now a graphic artist and she's a former student of mine and she's a very talented graphic artist. So I, I wow. used that. Then I found a local company in my hometown that mm. does dye sublimation. Mm -hmm. um, but I spent many months getting swatches of cloth and i also got some help from a gentleman tory reed in denver I'm trying to give him the shout outs where i can no, that's um, good. He also yeah he's uh, he's involved with the colorado studio club and he yeah. shared a material he had found and, and that also got me along the right lines of what i needed good and i found a polyester material which is important because players ask mm -hmm. that all the time the number mm -hmm. one question is is it a rubber back pitch it is not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because they associate that with astro pitches and top of the line pitches, and it's like yeah. a default question. Yeah, it's a polyester base, but this one has like a, a thickening underlining, which is it's still a cloth base, but it gives it more of a, a, a rigidity to it. 
Uh huh. Um, for me, I'm, I'm not saying it's something the World Cup should be played on next year, um, but is it something that you can play the game, and especially with modern bases where the figures slide, yeah. and you can shoot the ball? Yeah. You can. And I think it's uh, an upgrade on any cloth, other cloth pitch out there. I do believe so. Yeah, no, um, I saw you sliding the figures, and I was like, wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute, these actually very, very, slide very well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it slides, honestly, as well as an Astro pitch. Astro, uh, um, even, it, I would, I hate to say even like Extreme Works, it really does. Now, mm. the, the, the problem is the, the nap of the pitch and the ball will go a little further. These are different characteristics of pitches. Mm. So I'm not saying it's the fix for everything, but it's a move forward that helps me to hopefully get more people involved and in playing. The game so that's my Definitely. current direction uh with that so yeah i'm proud of that and i also got again to learn more processes uh on how things work in industry and working with manufacturers and the graphics so it was a lot of fun excellent and of course the future will hold greater things for you as you get uh hope so, hope you know so. into the development phase so this is really good so that's Absolutely. that's excellent nice nice now like I said, yep. we're going to be bouncing around a little no bit, getting, ba getting back to your playing age, uh, so yep. the playing days, I should say. Mm -hmm. It's actually six in the morning here, so I've got a little bit of brain fog. <laughs> oh, poor thing, poor thing. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Yeah. However, however, I wanted to ask you about your uh, tournament experience because you've played in yep. a lot of tournaments. You've uh, yeah. you played in Europe as well, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So, yeah, I got playing like the serious side, as you could say, when, uh, shortly after I introduced it to the kids. It was a year or so later that I got um, Greg Denhart, my good friend, again, reached out and said, hey, you're getting a bunch of kids playing. Do you want to host the U.S. Grand Prix for festive events? I had no idea what that was. Mm. But I was starting to play more and I was getting interested in it and started I reconnected with Greg and some other players in our area So then I and I did host that event and we had people come from Belgium um, mm -hmm. Stefan Lambert came from Belgium ah. We had uh, a gentleman from Germany who slips my mind um, an English player called Shorab Jananandan I'm sorry, sure, if I'm sure I'm, I'm mispronouncing your name, but he was a very good player and ended up winning the event. But we got some, and we, we got a good crew, crew, and we got a bunch of kids, and we put it all together. I had no wow. idea what I was doing. We ended up getting a, quite a bit of news coverage through our national public radio was involved, as interviewed on that. And then um, I started to play, so focusing on the playing, and I got exposed to, like, good players. Mm. Uh, and I definitely got the bug at that time. Um, then I played more and more and more. And um, a player who is also very well known in the U.S. called Zach Walker mm. moved to the area. And Zach is a great player and a very accomplished. And he moved from Minnesota area out to um, our area, the Mid-Atlantic region, we call it. He was working in Washington, D.C., and Zach was loving to play, very, very mm. contagious energy, very young. And he would reach out to me at like 10 o'clock at night and said, Paul, can I come and play a game? And we'd end up playing to 1 a.m. Wow. And we played game after game after game mm. after game after game. And he hooked me even more. And I think we both said to each other, we, we made each other a lot better because mm -hmm. Zach mm -hmm. played quite a bit in Europe and had made a rapid mm -hmm. improvement in his game and had got some really good results against good players and they could see how good he was going to be or was wow and i got to hang with zach so i kind of learned that way through him and at the same time we were growing a club in maryland mm -hmm. and i was now being a middle school teacher the kids i had taught and also kids were teaching other kids yeah. uh, in the area and we had a very very active group of youth players Mm. And I ended up by 2007 going to the World Cup with four youth players. Wow. Who were former students or protégés of mine, whatever you want to say. Yeah. And um, we went to that event and um, I played in the veterans. 
I did mm -hmm. not get out of my group, um, but I did play. I lost one zero to a world champion. Um, ah. Um, he was a very good player by the name of Gonzalez. He was a, a wow. Spanish world champion. And I tied a French gentleman 1-1. One, one. So it was very tight, but I didn't get yeah. out of my group. I had a great experience. Uh, and our youth team, though, mm. was we played as a U19 team. Oh, no, U15. U19 team, sorry. Mm. I think something like that. It was a youth mm. team. Mm. Uh, maybe it was U15. I got to say, yeah. But say that. And we were drawn against Italy, mm. and um, I think at, uh, after f after twelve minutes gone, the Italians knew something was wrong. All the top players were on the other <laughs> side of the hall, and they could hear a lot of cheering from mainly myself. I was pretty I'm pretty wow. pumped up, and we were beating Italy in the match score two to one. Wow. Um, these were a bunch of American kids <laughs> who had never played internationally other than at like our tournaments in Maryland. Mm. And um, we ended up losing, I think, 2-1 in the match score. But to give you an idea of how it finished, mm. uh, one table had Patrick Sheridan, who was 15 at the time, around the 16, mm -hmm. whatever, and being playing against his Italian opponent. And the table was surrounded by players like Bolognino, mm -hmm. world champions, the team, the senior team champions from Italy were all around the table. Wow. Um, they were trying to support their player because they knew how close a game it was. Mm. At the end, it was a tie in that particular match. And Patrick's hand was shaking because uh. they were <laughs> several, there was a, over a dozen to two dozen players surrounding his table watching wow. him play in the world cup and in this video that's a kind of a big deal yeah that's so, pressure. Um, so that kind of you know got me into the international and i got that bug, bug there and i i guess i played you know more seriously than i played in some tournaments so like 2006 mm. 2011 12 very active with mm. varying success i did win um the veterans gp in denmark great the same tournament, probably a bigger achievement was I got to the semi-final of the Open in the same event. Wow. And I lost to um, a top youth. I lost to, oh, no, I lost to Marcus Tilner uh, mm. from Germany. But that was kind of like a, my best experience. And I played a lot of games that day and only lost once. And I played like former world champions at U15 level. Yeah. Lots of lots of very good players, mm. and uh, that was that was kind of that. After that, you know, I would say maybe my play waned a little bit. Mm. And I, uh, you know, you you go you wax and wane on some things, and I mm. still kept playing. Mm. Um, but we've had a bit of a resurgence since in the last three four years, I would say. That's um, good to hear. Yeah, but I'm concentrating more. <laughs> Now on what I'm producing, it's very hard to do it all and have yeah. the enthusiasm for it all. Yeah. So you'll notice, like, and I would never put myself in the same league as these players, but um, the creator of Profi Base is um, uh, Marco De Angelis, who's a very famous player, by the way, in Italy, but no longer mm -hmm. plays, from what I'm aware. Mm -hmm. But he's a very, very good player. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, he produces Profi Base, and that's what he did. Mm. Enrico Tecchiari, who's very famous from uh, from Astrobase, yeah, um, has been a very good player in the past, um, but doesn't play at all. Mm. Claudio Bali is an exception, I think. He produces mm. things, and he's getting better and still playing with his stuff. So mm. it, it's kind of a trend, you know. You do all mm. this stuff, but how much can you give to it? Mm. So when I play, it really is almost like a downtime for me. Mm. With Sabino, I'm not like. Wow, I really have to, you know, win this game. Now I'm still a competitive person, Andrew. So, <laughs> apologies yep, to my yep. opponents. They know I still <laughs> want to win, but it's mm. not my biggest focus right now. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking. Yeah. With it. No, no, it's good. I mean, uh, and and it's quite amazing to see your enthusiasm. It just keeps growing. Uh, yeah. It doesn't wane at all. You just find yeah. different avenues to pull your energy yeah. and your. Yeah the effort that you're putting in the energy that you're putting in is actually helping draw others into the game 
which leads into my next question, which is one that I think you're very qualified to answer there, Paul, yep. about the youth, the direction, uh, because of course we're just getting further and further into the digital age, yep. we're merging with virtual yep. reality. We won't know what's real or what's fake anymore. Yep. Uh, you've probably seen that. I don't want to get into politics yep. or whatever, but yeah, we've right. seen that in America. It's kind of like yep. confusing us, whatever. Yes. But there are many positive aspects of that. But getting back to this game, yep. it's, 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 it's um, um, an amazing game. The tactile feeling you get, the social yep. experience, the competitive angle, yep. Yep. the skill that you can develop with it. You can't do that with video games. So um, mm. how do you draw young people to this game? So I would say, you know, things are changing rapidly, as you've just mentioned, you know, with all the artificial intelligence and all the different mm -hmm. things that are out there and coming, what, what's coming in the future, most of which, of course, we don't know. But things are changing very rapidly. So you got to look at what the kids are doing now mm. is my thing. And what they're doing is and what they're familiar with is they are spending a lot of time on social media. And... I would not underestimate that as an avenue. I think that is the place to go to mm. find the audience. And mm. this this video will quickly age itself because by the you know there'll be another platform in a year or two that's kind of blowing up. Mm. But Twitch and TikTok, for example, as we speak right now, mm. Mm. are areas where you can reach a lot of people in a very short amount of time. And you just need the right creator, the right share, the right kind of just explosion of activity mm -hmm. to take advantage of that. But you need to be positioned mm -hmm. to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And you also need creators that will make the content. That's right. The exciting thing is that that ability to create is at all of our fingertips right now. Mm. And I do think that is the way to go, but we need to be looking down from my age anyway. What are the kids doing? So the Twitch is very important, mm. okay? Um, and I know we have, and I'm going to look for it, our um, current format. Now, it, it, uh, it leaves me right now. You're going to give me a moment. Sure, um, sure, no worries. That um, we're using for our Discord. My bad. Mm. There you go. Sorry, okay. Dan Kress, who created our board with that, <laughs> is another format where you can draw people in and um, it's a mix of like chat forum, interaction, place to share video, to stream. And But there are also people out there that are just lurking. Mm. And there's a lot of lurkers, but if you have great content, or something that is fun and that is tailored to that Twitch audience, mm. to that TikTok audience, you build from there. And I, I go back to that example again of Patrick with his TikTok video. I mean, it got up in the millions. Wow. My my video channel has still just, it's got like 1.2, 1.3 million views wow. in 12 years. He beat that in a matter of days and weeks. Wow. Ah. So we want to be thinking away from some of our traditional media, I think. It's mm. important. Mm. You know, YouTube is still important. Uh, news outlets are still important. The radio is still important. But mm. to me, what could really break it for us is this underbelly that gets forgotten mm -hmm. or isn't looked at by people in established positions of, you know, the gaming community. You know, mm. we talk about you mentioned game uh, electronic games there yeah the audience is massive that's right and but we're still stuck in the world where on tv which we may be watching a lot of our kids don't watch tv anymore the big mm. news may be you know this movie grossed a hundred million dollars this weekend well you bring out another version of halo mm. that's going to make a billion dollars Right. It's not getting the attention from some of the established outlets. And I think we need to be, and a lot of people in Subidio are at an older age yeah. involved in administration. I, I include myself there. We need to be looking down into those areas for where to reach people. Mm. Now, there are other on the boots on the ground things you can do. 
you know, the youth soccer clubs is mm -hmm. a great opportunity because again, you get the visual. Yeah, yeah. You have of them seeing the game because when you do, mm -hmm. you know, it is there and and having the game played in public places is really important. But you need to amplify that with the use of video and social media and you need to have the structure you need to have an infrastructure of suppliers of organizations that are ready yeah uh, of local associations that are ready to support and teach and guide people who then pick up the game excellent excellent and you paul are uh, um, well poised actually because like you mentioned the united states will host the world cup so you are very yes well poised to pounce in on a potential soccer boom in the united yeah, states i hope so i hope so yeah so i think <laughs> i hope so yeah, I'm hoping, uh, yeah i would do some demos out there and um but yes definitely um yeah th there is definitely opportunities to promote the game through that um and tr you know traditional soccer is definitely a way people are going to be interested but you'd be surprised you know just tabletop gaming not just yeah. even electronic games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tabletop Strategists games. love this game. And one thing I am doing is in a couple of weeks, I'm doing for the first time, I'm going to a game, tabletop gaming convention in Denver, Colorado. Right. And I'm kind of dipping my toe into the water there along with our local Colorado Sabudio Club and kind of a partnership Excellent. where I'll be there in the sales area with a booth. Good. all these gaming companies hmm. and the colorado studio club will be out in the lobby or the foyer playing wow and then trying to marry those two and build from there kind of as a grassroots effort but that is another and i see that as a distinct group hmm. the tabletop gaming because and we're talking about there's a lot of creativity in that group and yeah. people who love strategy that, when they yeah. see this game you yeah. see some people just at the side mm. and they're trying to figure out why did that guy do that move and yeah. some of them are so learned in, in in gaming and scenarios that they already know and they have picked it up why mm. that guy did that move why mm. is he making that block that oh he's doing that because in three moves he's going to do this yeah and they've already got those pathways so yeah. that's another area that's yeah, so there's yeah. several areas to explore. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned tabletop gaming, and um, yeah. there is a site called boardgamegeek.com, yeah. and you yeah, actually yeah. feature on there. So if you type in Paul yeah. Ice, uh, yeah. there are people asking, where do I buy Sabudio in the USA? Yeah. And the search yeah. comes up, contact Paul Ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're yeah, already featuring there. on their forums. There. Yeah. A lot of work to do out there, though, still with it. But uh, yeah, there's so many areas. and. Of course, people are doing this as a part-time enterprise for the most part. I've got more time now mm. to devote to this. So when I'm talking about organizations and people doing things, we have to remember that these are people with real jobs, <laughs> uh, right. you know, in, yeah. in addition to a passion for Sabudio. In, in many places, in many ways, I'm better placed right now to put in that time in what I'm doing. That's, that's where I'm spending my time. That's excellent, excellent. And... Uh, yeah, I hope I'm not keeping you from anything, but uh, no, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, keep going. You're it, good. Good, good, good. Because I'm going to bounce now to a, yep. another direction yep. here. Getting back to the rules of the game that have evolved over the years, you've seen yep. many iterations of the rules. I'm sure there yep. are some things you loved about the old game that maybe you think uh, should be brought back, or vice versa. You're happy that there are some new rules that have changed things. Can you tell us some of the rules of the game, the new game that you uh, like, and some of the rules that you don't? Um, so what do I like? Um, mm. They've made some recent adjustments to the game, and I like those, because they've mm. been to the benefit of the offense. Um, I think the way that... Um, you know what what i like about the modern game is the amount of skill that's needed to execute mm. to get over the shooting line and to be able to score a goal and the variety of ways in which that can be done 
And I think that the balance of the rules right now is moving to a good area from my perspective in terms of in the past, it was easy to spoil the efforts of a good player by mm. almost delaying, by forcing fouls or throw-in situations, whereas now a throw-in, for example, in the newest version of the modern rules mm. is a very big attacking opportunity for mm. the player with the ball. Mm -hmm. So um, those are some things that I like currently. And aesthetically about the modern game, the ability to shoot the ball and chip it in a beautiful arc, if mm -hmm. you can execute that, is a beautiful thing to see and to execute and very fulfilling to do. Yeah. Um, as is, by the way, a low shot when you choose to do that, drilling a low shot to the oh, you yeah. nail it all those things like a golfer almost mm. being able to hit a seven iron stinger shot or one that is higher you know and vary that it's really yeah. tops video players with their equipment with good equipment can do those same things mm. so kind of married to the equipment level the way that the rules in the modern game has kind of encouraged that if you will um things that i guess i would like to have back you know mm. most of my play was solo play in the yeah. old rules yeah so i don't have a lot of experience playing like competitive play with the old rules i just find it mm. like really fun mm. um to play with that and kind of a great leveler in some ways with the old rules i'm trying to think of something in particular i would like back um i think some of the um, you know, the formations is the one thing mm -hmm. where we see, you know, the, the, the line of 10 on a line at the back. Yeah. Which can something be done about that? Mm. Uh, you know, it's hard because the materials and the skill of the players has got far in advanced yeah. of what the rules can limit. Mm. Uh, because if you force everybody to have four figures at the back with an opening, then, you know, Carlos Flores will be 10 0 up after 20 minutes, you know, which you probably won't. <laughs> yeah. All right. But um, is there something you can do in certain situations where, at the kickoff, for example, mm. or at a goal kick, mm. can you not have more than four players on the defensive line? I'm just thinking out, line, out loud. Yeah, something to open the game. Mm. I'm not the best at that, but I have my talents in other areas, Andrew. I'm not the best at that mm. Um, mm. in thinking about it. But that, for me, is something that I see as something somebody with a traditional eye on Tabudio, and somebody who can be coming back to it, or a lover of soccer or football and coming mm. back to the game. Yeah, and saying, well, yeah, this is good, but you got ten figures at the back. What is that all about? <laughs> this is not so, and it's a legitimate question and yeah, it, it, it leads to an awkward and <clears throat> lengthy answers mm. which don't help promote the game now I, I but i do admit these are not easy issues which is why i don't get involved in, in them too much but that is my two cents on that if you will yeah uh, i think some good moves have been made like i said the the throw-in rule is a relatively mm. new one in how that mm. was done and i do like that Mm -hmm. uh, and even that small change made a big difference no that's a very valid point or a few valid points there because when i got back into it uh that was one thing that kind of like uh yeah. raised my yeah. eyebrows is like what What's yeah. this? is this yeah. soccer away you yeah. got to, yeah seven yeah. eight nine there but when i played it it was like fun kind of flicking yep. through because you got more space in the middle. However, once I got yep. there, it's like, now how do I get past the this line? Because yeah. he's got yeah. all his players on there. And it's yeah. like, yep. now he's crowding me. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. What am I playing? Uh, yep. But as I got a little bit better, I, I ended up getting yep. through there. But that was that was probably one of the less appealing points to yes. us. An excellent yep. game, an excellent game of strategy. Right. Um, yeah. you know yeah. uh and you're yeah. the first one that's actually mentioned that so it's actually raised a valid point so sure. yeah so uh one or two final 
questions there, Paul? Well, so some, some people yeah. always want me to ask this question towards the end or at least yeah. mention it somewhere in the video. For the new players getting in, right, and they want to yeah. get into tournaments, because a lot of people are, have the challenging, yeah. especially people in the United States, they love the challenging yeah. games, whatever. And they yeah. asked me, okay, I want to go in the tournament, but I don't want to embarrass myself. Like, yeah. Ten, yeah. how do I get good fast? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And the main way I address that, first of all, is, you know, for our community, for example, you know, it's very rare that the big blowouts happen. If they do, you know, that's, mm. I wouldn't say frowned upon at this stage, but just like, you know, why bother doing that? What's the point, you know? in doing that and it's not that i haven't beaten players by a good score you know but um so i need to you know fess up to that if, if that's happened sorry if you're out there folks um but first of all don't worry about that and try to put it aside so it's unlikely to happen but even if it does it is only a game you know so there's that um so try to approach it that way i also still encourage people one big problem is that you have to address is that a lot of people are worried about being embarrassed so we need to recognize it so it's a very good question andrew um but that it is still important to come out and have the experience because you can you can practice alone and you can make progress for sure but i always say that if you come, for example, to our local club here and you're in the area mm. looking enough to be around and you're 50 miles away, for example, which here is around the corner, you know, mm. um, and you've been watching YouTube video after YouTube video, you've got a table and you're flicking around the table. You could do that for six months and watch every training video out there. But if you played 30 minutes against Daniel Cranston, you would get your six months worth of knowledge mm. and improvement and your head filled with i'll be back next week wow kind of thing and it is that's very hard to pitch it that way mm. because people don't want to be embarrassed and also you know you got to think about it too people are coming a long way oftentimes to travel and come to an event so i always encourage people to come to events because that's yeah. a big part of it because yes you may well lose and don't anticipate winning but what if you are on your own you know i do think you can still learn a lot if you've mm. got even one player that's great um i would reach out to established players like you know people mm. who are on like the message boards and try to make a connection usually people you might be able to part or find local players for example because it's always helpful so that's mm. good but yes, if you're on your own, let's stick with that point. Mm. You know, there are things that you can do with the ball and like three figures. Mm. And I've got on my Subudio Man YouTube, like practice drills. Mm. And you can do those where can you move the ball with three figures without using any one of them more than two times in a row? Uh, to start with more than three times in a row and for that mm. you have to create angles etc mm. you keep using those three figures yeah and you can make it progressively harder by being in the end you have to alternate them in a certain order mm. or in the end you get to a point where you can only rotate them um after one flick Right. And you have to create that angle for the next one. So that's a progressive thing. And that builds on that teaching thing of like the scaffolding. Yep. Of like you start with something and then you make it a little harder and then you make it a little harder still. That is a skill because that's important because when you play, when people first start to play, uh, I recognize people have just started playing because it's a natural progression and it's in their brain. It's like they'll come forward with one. And then they'll come forward with two figures <laughs> and then eventually they will come forward with three figures now that might take one two three or four weeks time but eventually they'll get to that point mm. but if you start out by teaching yourself to come forward in advance with two or three mm. you will have cut things shorter mm. to some degree now um so there is that then I also recommend there's a lot of great mm -hmm. content out there of people playing the game online. Mm -hmm. 
mm. and looking at um, you know I've got a lot of match action on uh, my channel but yeah. there's a gentleman maybe you can link I'm sorry um, to give you some work to do there Andrew but no no uh, it's always good FTP uh, he's, he's with the um, Pularens club in France which I probably butchered the name or if you reach out <laughs> to me later Andrew I yeah, will share I'll, a link and find him yeah um, I'll do that that's probably easy he has great yeah great videos of top players and fist of games of watching players that can be really useful because you do a lot of people are really big visual learners yeah and they're able to process things through there yeah but then it's very different because it can be very deceptive it sometimes makes the game look easy mm. and it is not it's kind of like watching pro golfers and like oh you know i can get round augusta and you know i'm ready for the masters next year because i know how right. to play yeah. it because i've seen it i've seen it well i can't you know yeah. but um it can help though a lot and it, it, certain personalities very analytical types mm. and visual learners they can definitely pick up an awful lot yeah um, I've also been swayed recently by we had a player and I was uh, he really surprised me mm -hmm. um, Matt Culp who mm. is a local player here and he's a huge enthusiast and a hobbyist with many things a really nice guy ah. and uh, he got into solo playing mm. and he got into playing a lot and he started a solo league and there are solo leagues out there people just playing like solo rules and there are copies out there of rules for Sabudio with it uh, and okay. I he, he eventually got into like playing more and playing like a local player I think was coming out to the national championships and I was trying to mm. almost no insult to, to Matt to say you know he was like I want to win and I want to play really well and I, I you know mm. it's just temper the enthusiasm a little bit like it's going to be hard man you know just learn mm. you're there to learn and don't, don't make it too hard on yourself and he actually really surprised a lot of people by coming out yeah. and playing really well. And I'm not saying that in a demeaning way. I actually find no. it really hard hmm. and amazing that he had done it that way. Wow. And I learned something there, Andrew, that he hmm. could, I think it depends on the individual because we all learn different ways. Yes. He really had broken a lot of things down. And I, I have to tip my hat to Matt there. Mm. and i'm always surprised sometimes when you leave people do in a way have to find their own way yeah all kids are like that i found that for learning for kids they learn mm. in a lot of different ways mm. and one of the worst things you would say you could tell people is giving the least instructions i mean mm. having the basics but then not teaching too much is actually you get more creativity exactly so right now like i have a we have some youth players i try to stop myself from saying you know put 10 eight players at the back there ryan mm. because i he might be the person who just cuts me to shreds mm. and he's figuring out things his way and sometimes you don't want to you've got to kind of find that balance you know especially yeah. young players who rapidly evolve it's actually fascinating watching people learn and how they do it we're all different so That's right. it's not a short answer but no. definitely some, some practice drills you can get better um eventually when you get there i would not be i would feel that you would be welcomed at a tournament um you know and reaching out to lo to people who have maybe in your local area trying to find any local players at all is better than traveling 500 miles if you can find somebody 30 miles and play games in the evening play a few that's great yeah it's not always possible but um yeah those are some tips there uh mm, you know, if i had mm, the magic formula with the, with thousands of players around you know it's uh you know we're still seeching for that magic source no very good go. points very very yeah. good salient points there paul and like you mentioned, uh, the individual learning style is very important because yeah. not everybody yeah. is extroverted. Yeah. And I've n noticed what right. uh, sometimes I do. Uh, I'm, I'm new in the game, but um, yeah. at the same time, I'm teaching others. I'm trying to bring people in. And one thing I've, uh, I let people do is like without any pressure, just experiment. And yeah. I've noticed some people that play solo 
yep. they actually play better because they don't have somebody looking at them. They don't feel the pressure. So they are trying things that they wouldn't try if they're in yep. the game. They're a little bit scared. Oh, now I'm going to miss. Yep. And then, and, yep. and, and because they are trying these things, they actually develop the skill. Yep. Uh, yep. in things that they wouldn't be doing if they played just straight and uh, facing an, exactly. another person. So maybe that's that's the thing with that exactly. guy. Exactly, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yep. Very good, very good. Um, very so good. are there any uh, final words or thoughts or any developments on the horizon at your end, from your end yeah. there? Um, at our end, I mean, just, just general thoughts. I'm still very bullish on the opportunities for Sabudio. Um, people learning the game and bringing more people into the game. I, I think that we really are on the verge of something mm. different and more people um, just discovering it mm. um, because the tools now are more and more at our fingertips. Uh, mm. I say that of the internet and sharing information, but also creativity you know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but if I'm able to figure out how to make 3D bases, I know already there's somebody else out there who is doing it. I actually know somebody who's doing it, but who mm -hmm. there will be many others to come, mm -hmm. and who knows what they're going to create. And then you've got people who make things for their local clubs, and that gets other people involved. Then you get other creators. And this kind of creative environment that we're in right now mm. – I see opportunities for Subudio that will tie in and will have people wanting to explore our game. So I'm I'm kind of excited. I feel kind of on the edge with that a little bit with what I'm doing. Um, but I know I just have to glance over my shoulder and somebody else is going to literally blow us out of the water with something <laughs> soon. So – there are exciting times out there. Um, people still want to meet and get together. They still mm -hmm. want the excitement. Yeah. Um, hobbies are incredibly healthy. Mm. If we've learned one thing from the pandemic, it should be about structuring our lives to involve ourselves with others in keeping mm -hmm. those connections. Yeah. That is vital to our health. Mm -hmm. So if you're working really, really hard and can't find time for your hobbies, whether it be Sabuti or not, mm. you do need to step back because it is a concern. Uh, and it's not good for you and your loved ones and those around you. We need this stuff. That's right. So, And it doesn't have to be Sabuti. It can be your thing. So I always say this is a crazy little game. This just happens to be mine. Right. That's kind of my little summation there, Andrew. Yeah. Um, but it's never been more apt than at this very moment. So, you know, get out there, enjoy playing the game, creating things, painting your figures, getting goofy, making content that's creative, having fun with your friends, going to a tournament playing in your basement with a few beers who gives a rip do your thing be you and whatever that is just have some fun excellent aptly said paul aptly said well thank you so much paul it's been a great pleasure and honor uh, a definite honor and uh i really hope to have you uh on again if if, if you have the so time thanks. in the future that will be really great sounds good thanks andrew bye to everybody thanks. out there Thanks, see Paul. Man. Have a Bye good man. one. Yeah. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome, Andrew. Take care. It was fun. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, sir. All right.